Hello everyone, it is now mid-April and that means the Ultra High Difficulty Quest Planet Breaker Blitz is now out. This also means that the 11 Star Weapon Series Wingard has released, and with that, all gear has been released. Because of this, I decided to make another gear video on NGS, as the last one I made was all the way back in October when Guard came out. This video, similarly to the last one, will be broken up into three parts. Weapons, armor, and affixes. Now, gearing, now, gearing wise, quite a bit has changed. For example, Fixas can now be rolled with or with a level 1 preset addition support item. To add to this, you can also re-roll level 1 Fixas with the same support item, which means getting a desirable level 1 Fixa is now pretty attainable. Speaking of Fixas, pretty much every Fixa excluding Abandak, Unwix, and Orgsis were buffed earlier this year to be more in line with the three Fixas previously mentioned. This means that Fatal, Termina, and Attack are much better and in the case of Fatal is extremely desirable once more. Ideally, for weapons, you'll want pretty much any Fixa that isn't Unwix or Wix, for the most part. You'll gain the most from Fixa Oryxis. This is especially true due to how many weapon potentials this time around are sent around using Photon Blasts to gain effects. With that out of the way, let's get into weapons. Like my previous gearing video, this will be split into entry level, mid, and high end weapons. You'll find this time around most weapons players will be using will be in the middle end. First off, we have entry level weapons. As per usual, any seasonal weapon can be considered an entry level weapon due to the ease of attaining them. In this video, the seasonal weapon is Millennium Round. However, any current seasonal weapon works. The Millennium Round weapons all have 1039 base attack and the potential of Season Change Unit. This potential, when maxed out, has 29% potency, 10% damage resistance, and minus 10% PP consumption, and 10% photon blast gauge when attacking the enemy. Overall, this is a passable weapon, but it's rather weak in terms of potency and base attack. If you are just starting the game, you will have the Argenti weapons to use. These weapons are free weapons given to you when you reach level 65 of any class, if you are currently equipped class. Generally speaking, these are fine weapons to use, however they also have an innate zero crit and are generally much weaker in strength compared to the weapons you should be aiming for. Argenti weapons have 1000 base attack and a potential soothing unit, which grants 30% potency and recovers 4% HP every 10 seconds after being equipped for 10 seconds. With entry level weapons out of the way, let's talk about mid level weapons. This time around, you have the 10 star Flugel Guard, Brayar, and Zover weapon series as the solid mid level options. Flugel Guard weapons are the first 10 star weapons to release last October. As a result, while they are much more common now, they have generally fallen behind with the most recent update to the seal and the introduction of these Zover weapons. With 1094 base attack and a potential faithful unit which grants 37% potency and it's overall a decent weapon, however its potential's effect is now mostly useless as it requires at least two blue guard users to gain one of its free effects. The effects are as follows. Two Flugel Photon Blasts within 120 seconds gives damage resistance. Three Flugel Photon Blasts within 120 seconds gives PP consumption down. And four, four Flugel Photon Blasts within 120 seconds grants critical hit rate up. Next up, we have the 10 star Rayar weapons. These are color swaps of the Kaiser 7 star weapons. Weapons can be obtained through exchanging materials, typically given from level 80 to 85 content, and the weapons can also outright drop through the same class the materials do. These weapons are overall strong and rather easy to obtain and have 1098 base attack. The potential for Rayar conduction form has 36% potency and grants 5% more potency to photon arts and techniques at the cost of plus 10% PP consumption for using them. This puts rare weapons above Flugel Guard in terms of strength, making them a solid choice. Finally, we have the Zover weapons. These are the most recently released weapon series and are broken up in the free weapon potentials which depend on the type of weapon you are using. These weapons can be farmed from the current Lasile Exploration where V will either outright drop from the quest or you can trade in Groveman 2 for one of your choice for 50 Groveman 2. Alternatively, you can trade in 300 for one fix of a Tau, however it is easier and less costly to roll a fix of your own now. All Zover weapons have 1,101 base attack. The weapon potentials are as follows. Zover's first potential has a potential foundation unit. Foundation unit has 41% potency and grants 25% damage resistance when at 95% HP or higher. And also gives 50% more HP recovery after using a photon blast which starts 10 seconds after being equipped. The second potential is Core Unit. Core Unit has 41% potency and grants minus 10% PP consumption when your HP is at 95% or higher. Upon using a Photon Blast, 50% HP recovery will be granted to you upon it being equipped for 10 seconds. Finally, you have the potential Origin Unit. Origin Unit grants plus 15% natural PP consumption when at 95% HP or greater. 
Like the previous Zobra weapons, 50% HP recovery will be granted after using a Photon Blast. Now that we've gone into Zover's potentials, let's address the elephant in the room. These three potentials all suck, and aside from having more damage on average compared to Rayar, the effects and the potential grants are not only strict, but very minuscule in effect. Despite the lackluster potential, these weapons are extremely easy to obtain and are probably the best weapons aside from Rayar at the time of the video, aside from the singular 11-star weapon, Wingard. This brings us to high-end weapons. Currently, there is only one, the 11-star weapon series Wingard. Wingard has the base attack of 1114 and the weapon potential eruption unit has 43% potency and allows you to deal 1% more damage to enemies after using a photon blast. This effect can be stacked for up to 3% more damage with other Wingard photon blasts from different players. Overall, the Wingard weapon series is the strongest weapon you can get, however it comes at the cost of being about as rare as a Fugelguard weapon. This means despite Wingard's strengths, it is rather difficult or expensive to obtain making either Zover or Rayar the better option for most players to aim for. That's essentially all for weapons, let's talk about armor. As far as armor goes, you have the Anaya Rainbow. I won't go into these too much because you can basically use any 9 star unit and will be set because they all get 5.5% potency with the exception of the Arga, Shiza, and Belta versions, which only give all potency for 2 damage types instead of 3. The main difference is how much of each total substat you get. Anaya Armor, which gives 5.5% technique, ranged, and melee potency, and 20 HP to PP. These are trade untradeable units, meaning they cannot be sold. Anea Armor Vio, which gives 5.5% technique, range, and melee potency, and 6 PP. Anea Armor Vita, which gives 5.5% technique, range, and melee potency, and 30 HP. Anea Armor Arga, which gives 5.5% melee and range potency, and 35 HP, and 7 PP. Anea Armor Shiza, which gives 5.5% melee, technique, potency, and 35 HP, and 7 PP. And finally, Anea Armor Belta, which gives 5.5% range and technique potency and 35 HP and 7 PP. Essentially, it's up to preference what you want. The Belta, Shiza, Arga units have the most bang for a buck, but are overall hard to get a higher fixer on compared to Anea, Vita, and Vio. Anea Armor can be found from pretty much all relevant content, similar to how Via and Vita can be found in Combat Zones and Dark Falls Dalian. For the most part, Arga, Belta, Shiza primarily show up in limited time content. With units out of the way, let's talk about affixes. Assuming you start off with the Argenti weapons and Efficent units as a bare minimum entry level gear, there are two ways to go from there. That is Budget Biss or Biss. Budget Biss typically involves easy to obtain affixes and an AC capsule, while Biss requires all of the very difficult to obtain long grind affixes. Here is what you should aim for. Obtaining what I call Budget Biss is easy and requires you to simply use affixes that can be found from Lucille Exploration and various other content in the game that releases that may also drop LC affixes. Trio capsules drop from Crimson Realm as well as the Time Extension quests and can be used to sub out LC Gigas Masks for them. All trio capsules count towards a different category so multiple trio capsules can be used, however Ponzi Floor shouldn't be neglected as well unless you are a Slayer, where there is less reliance on it. Finally, an AC capsule, which can be typically either be scratched for or bought off the player market, is also put on budget bis. However, you, if you absolutely can't afford it, a trio capsule works just fine. Obtaining this is slightly more complex as there are two ways to go about it. You can either craft all the capsules required, which requires a massive amount of resources, or you can instead make four capsules and gamble them using augment protection, which can be found in the SG treasure shop. By gambling one at a time, you can spend minimal meseta, assuming they all eventually can be fixed onto the gear. The materials required to make the capsules can be found in various content, such as dual quests, urgent quests, combat zones, and various exchanges, or King Captain. Finally, you would end off this with an AC capsule like XD or a stronger version of XD, assuming one would be released in the next month or so. Any effects not listed here is not worth using, period. This is because the free level 65 gear from hitting level 65 on classes is essentially the bare minimum you should be using. Budget Biss is the next step up from that, and affixes such as Dread Key Review do not provide anything that the LC augments do not already provide. This is basically all you need to know about affixes. With weapons, units, and affixes now covered, that is everything you need to know about gearing up in the current state of NGS. It's become much more streamlined over the last few months, although attaining best in slot is still very resource heavy and time consuming. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. That being said, thank you for watching the video and good luck fighting Dark Falls Dalian.